What is your name, please? My name is Tom Pike. My name is Tom Pike. My name is Tom Pike. Only one of these people is the real Tom Pike. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Johnny Carson, Kitty Carlisle, Don Amici, and Betty White on to Tell the Truth with your host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. Welcome once again to Tell the Truth. Brought to you this week by Tristan, decongestant cough medicine. Stops coughing due to colds or bronchial irritation. Tristan, decongestant cough medicine. Panel, would you please open your envelopes for the first time tonight? Take out your affidavit cards and follow along as I read. I, Tom Pike, am an authority on American pioneer life. On land which was deeded to my family by President Madison in 1812, I built a frontier fort and stocked it as a museum. This fall, the Flintlock and Buckskin Rendezvous held its semi-annual meeting at my fort. Pioneering enthusiasts from all over the country wearing authentic frontier costumes competed in knife and tomahawk throwing matches. We also held marksmanship contests with flintlock rifles. I made part of the equipment I am wearing from the skins of animals I trapped or shot. I also handmade the flintlock rifle I am holding. Signed, Tom Pike. Well, as you heard, three gentlemen all claiming to be Tom Pike, authority on American pioneer life. And we begin this first round of questioning with Johnny Carson. Johnny? Bud, since this is my last week, you mentioned Tom is coming back. I wanted to mention how uh, much fun I've had being with the rest of the panel and you these past couple of weeks. And I'm available anytime. <laughs> it's been our pleasure, believe me, Johnny. Uh, Mr. Pike, uh, number two, Mr. Pike, uh, who did Kit Carson marry? I don't know. Number three, who did Kit Carson, the scout, marry? I do not know. Number one? I do not know either. Well, she wasn't much of a girl when he <laughs> came right down. <laughs> uh, number one, uh, what did Lewis and Clark do? They were early explorers of the western part of the country. Number three, who were Lewis and Clark? Lewis and Clark, they were two explorers, and, and they went up to the Oregon country Oh, and I think 18.2 to 18.4. Number two, who's John C. Fremont? John C. Fremont was a pioneer. Uh-huh. I guess he was. <laughs> Kitty. Well, Number three, who did Daniel Boone marry? I couldn't tell you I that. I love this line of questioning. Uh, you know. <laughs> no. Uh, number one, uh, what is uh, the difference between a flintlock rifle and an ordinary modern-day rifle? Well, uh... Flintlock rifle used uh, black powder and ball and modern rifle used... Do you, do you load it that way through the muzzle? Yes. You do. And you tamp it down. Do they explode? When they're supposed to, I guess they do. <laughs> no, I mean, would they, would they explode? Well, never mind. Uh, number two, what is the animal that you shot that you're wearing on your head? A raccoon. Number not two, are you wearing the same animal on your head? A raccoon, yes. A raccoon? The same kind of animal, not the same animal. <laughs> Number one, what is buckskin? It's a uh, deer hide. A deer hide. Did you tan that one yourself? Yes. John? Uh, number two, does a bullet come out of your gun straight? Yes. <laughs> it, 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 in other words, it comes out this way, there's no twirl to it? Uh, there is a, a twirl from the patch causing the twirl of the ball. Uh, number, th number three, what causes the, uh, the bullet to twirl? Well, the, ri the rifle has six to eight grooves in it, and these grooves are embedded in a patch. And when the powder goes off, imparts uh, motion to the ball, and the patch spins it. Thank you That's very much. Number uh, long range. <laughs> Thank you. Number one, what, uh, what other material would you use, could you use for a jacket? Well, anything you had at hand. No, I'm talking about skins. <laughs> Any kind of a, a wild animal skin. Could you, that was could you name me a couple? Sear sucker. <laughs> <laughs> Buffalo or calf? Bear. Am I am I through? Yes, you are. But laughter covered so your answer so quickly. What was your answer? Buffalo or calf? Buffalo or calf? Thank, the, thank the, you, thank you, Bud. Betty. Thank you, Bud. Number one, uh, what kind of rifle? Uh, what is the the name besides flintlock? Do you, what do you call your rifle? 
Well, we call them the long rifle. Uh, number two, what habit does a raccoon have before it eats? Washing his food. And number three, what's the Indian name for elk? D-P-O-E. No, number one, what's the Indian name? <laughs> do not know. <laughs> I don't believe I know either. Number two, do you know what the Indian name for elk is? I do not know. Oh, boy, that's <laughs> a big help. Uh, what is used to caulk log cabins, number three? To, to caulk? Ca between the logs. Uh, uh, mud and uh, sometimes sod. That's it for the first round tonight. You have exhausted the time that there is, and not your patience, I'm sure, because you're anxious to find out which one is the real one. So will you kindly mark your ballot? Without consultation panel, vote for number one, Number two, or number three. Of course, the team of challengers will get the usual $250 for every incorrect vote. All ballots marked. All right, Johnny, what is your first vote tonight? Don't you want to know who Kit Carson married? Yes, who did, who did Kit Carson marry? He married an Indian squaw. He did. What was her name? Wheeler. I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> it's an interesting name. I vote right, for vote. <laughs> Running Bear is her name, actually. <laughs> uh, I voted for number three. Good for you. Because he looks like my grandfather. <laughs> Kitty, your vote, please. I voted for number one. Number three gave too much information. Uh, it was excellent information. Of course, I don't know about the bores of a gun. But I voted for number one because he seemed to know about what he, who tanned the hides he was wearing. Don, what is your vote? I voted for number... Uh, Three, Bud. I love that explanation he gave of how that bullet comes out of that gun. You know, <laughs> how many times it turns. <laughs> Betty, which one do you think is the real one? Well, I voted for number two. With a name like Tom Pike, there's something fishy about all three of them. But number two knows about a raccoon. <laughs> well, we're humming tonight, I must say. Okay, there we have it with the votes all registered. And if you registered yours as you're playing at home, let's see how you compare with our astute panel as we discover which one of these three gentlemen is an authority on American pioneer life. The Will the Real, Tom Pike, please stand up. Not number three already, I can say that. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. I wonder if you'd mind telling I'm very anxious to know just exactly where your museum is. It's in Eastern Ohio, near Lisbon, on Route 172. Mm -hmm. Well, we get out there, Route 172, stop off and see it. <laughs> Ask the Tom Pike, I'm sure they all know. Number two, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? I am an engineer for Congoyam Nairn in Trenton, New Jersey. My name is Daniel Boone. <laughs> Yeah. And a pet raccoon, that's right. Number three, your real name and what you do, please. I've been a high school teacher in the city of New York for the past 30 years. I teach mathematics. I teach mathematics at the Woodrow Wilson Vocational High School in Queens. And my real name is Davy Crockett. Uh -huh. <laughs> I give up. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, it was great having you with us. Let's check our score now, Davy and Daniel and uh, Mr. Pike. <laughs> Let's see how we work out here. We had uh, one, two, three incorrect at $250 each for a grand total of $750 from Dristan <clears throat> and a gift uh, box of fine products and the makers of Dristan for each of you. Happy hunting, fellas. It was a nice show with you. Good night and good luck. Good today. night. Good night. Anyway, I introduce our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Simone Gosner. My name is Simone Gosner. My name is Simone Gosner. Again, will you follow along, panel, with your copies of this affidavit? I, Simone Gosner, am an astronomer. My specialty is the calculation of eclipses of the sun and the moon. I am a member of the Eclipse Commission of the International Astronomical Union. For the past 10 years, I have been an astronomer for the United States Naval Observatory. Signed, Simone Gossner. <laughs> These three young ladies all claiming to be Simone Gossner, astronomer. And we begin this round of questioning with our astronomer, Kitty Carlisle. Oh, Kitty? I'm no astronomer. I need that uh, high school teacher who is the <laughs> mathematician to help me. Number one, um, 
What play of Mark Twain's, or rather story of Mark Twain's, revolved around an eclipse which was foretold by Merlin? Uh, I think it's a Connecticut Yankee. Number two, uh, what is geodetics? Number three, what is geodetics? I wouldn't know. Number one? It's unrelated to astronomy. It's unrelated to astronomy. Number two, which side of the moon was photographed by the Russians? The back side. No. <laughs> <laughs> Number three. <laughs> I think it's only fair to explain that the moon was bending over at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, how do you calculate the uh, eclipse? Uh, I can compute. You compute it? Right. From the previous one? No, we compute with electronic spring. Uh -huh. Num oh, brain. Don? Number three, what is the new gravitational field just found? It happened in the newspaper just the tr uh, day before yesterday. What is it? Do you know? Uh, no, I don't remember. I was reading it. Thank you. Number one, would you know? I was traveling at the time, I'm afraid. Number two, you, no, you I'm wouldn't... Sorry. Uh, yes. Number... Uh, then you wouldn't any of know what... Uh, uh, how great it was. Uh, number two... <laughs> <laughs> I say that because it said specifically it was, it was a certain number of times greater than the, uh, than the gravitational field in the Earth. Uh, number two, what is the uh, uh, biggest telescope in the world? That's in California, Palomar. Uh, number That's three. The reflecting one, that is. Thank you very much. Number three, what is the size of the, of the lens? 200 the inches. 200 inches. Uh, number, uh, Betty? Thank you, Bud. Number one, how many stars in the constellation Pleiades? It depends how keen your vision is. I no, how many seven. stars in the constellation, whether we can see them with the eye or not? Well, uh, seven with the eye, but the uh, Pleiades are not a constellation anyway. Well, that'll show me. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, what would be the easiest way for, for a layman to find the North Star, to find Polaris? Well, go to the Little Dipper and take there's the, uh, the tail star, the North Star. Uh, number three, how would you find Polaris? It's at the tail of the Little Dipper. Of the Little Dipper? Yes. Johnny? Uh, number one, if you weighed approximately 100 pounds on the Earth, what would you weigh on the Moon? Approximately. I think about six tenths. About 610 pounds? No, 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 six no. Tenths. Six tenths. Six, six tenths of pound. Uh, number one, what is the Crab Nebulae? Number two, what is the Crab what Nebulae? What is the name of one of the nebulas? Number That's three, what is the Crab Nebulae? It's a constellation. Number one, uh, the Earth is part of, uh, what is our solar system known as? What is our solar system known as? I'm not sure I understand your question. The name given to Well, we are in, system. what is the solar system that the Earth, the planet Earth, is in. What is it called? Well, you mean uh, the sun, the moon, the, uh, and the... Yeah, they're uh, all part of what solar planets system? planets form what we call our solar system, yes. But number two? That's all the time we have. You may not find out tonight, Johnny, what our solar system is called, but call your own what you will, oh, just to mark your balance, either. if you will. Without consultation, you please vote for number one, number two, or number three. Everyone set? No. no. Oh. <laughs> I don't want to play this. I don't know. <laughs> oh. You're all voted, let me know. All right, Johnny, all set? Your vote, please. I have the slightest idea. I'm going to vote for number three, uh, just by deduction. Um, I'll vote for number three. <laughs> Kitty. I know it's number one, but I voted for number three. Number three knew about the, uh, well, I don't really know, but she gave a, 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 a number for the Palomar telescope, and you asked about Crab Nebulae. I don't believe that exists. I think you were fooling all of us, including me. Oh, that's a dish of the delicatessen, Dr. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is a Crab Nebulae. All right, Don. <laughs> I, I voted for number three. I'll use any one of, of Kitty's and Johnny's reasons. That's all right. <laughs> And Betty, which one do you think is the right one? Well, I take number one because I think she just misunderstood Johnny's question. And I would find Polaris by following the, the, the two stars of the bowl of the Big Dipper. And they point to Polaris. And I besides... Answer that question. I, no, you didn't. But, but the other two ladies said it was in the Little Dipper. And 
Besides, I've gone through my whole life thinking the Pleiades was a constellation. <laughs> well, live and learn, as we will now, when we discover which one of these ladies yeah. is the real astronomer. And uh, we'll do that right now. So keep watching and waiting with bated breath as we ask the real Simone Gossner to please stand up. <laughs> Very nice to have you with us. She's wearing her own constellation, as you can see, in that very dazzling little medallion there. Number two, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? Hi, my name is Barbara Winning, and I work as the secretary to the president of a Swedish shipyard. Thank you. And number three, may we have your real name and what you do? My name is Gerda Ettisch. I'm with Lieberman, Wellesley & Company, New York, and I'm the import manager for Japanese wallpapers. Thank you. A brief look at the score tells us that there are one, two, three incorrect votes again at $250 each. And that means a total of $750 for the second time tonight from Dristan and a gift package of fine products from the makers of Dristan for each of you. I hope you enjoyed your visit to us. We certainly enjoyed having you here. Good night and good luck to you. Good night. Panel, how about a third round of challenges? Yes. What is your name, please? My name is Manuel Guara. My name is Manuel Guara. My name is Manuel Guara. Follow along for the third time tonight, panel, if you will, with your copies of this affidavit. I, Manuel Guara, better known as Guarita, am a professional high lie player. High lie is generally conceded to be the fastest game in the world. And although it is played mostly in Spanish speaking countries, it is growing in popularity here in the United States. I am the world's singles highlight champion. Signed, Manuel Guara. <laughs> All right, panel, you heard these three stalwart gentlemen, each claiming to be Manuel Guara, or Guarita, as he is popularly known, world champion highlight player. Now, panel, this is a genuine, genuine highlight ball the real article, and I'm going to let you have it to pass along and examine as you're doing the questioning. So, uh, start the ball rolling with Don Amici. Thank you very much, bud. Boy, is that a hard mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, are you Spanish? Yes, sir. Number two also? Yes, sir. Number three? Yes, sir. Uh, number one, uh, uh, where did the TH sound begin in Spanish? The TH sound? Yes, like uh, 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 gracias. Oh, it began in Castilla. Yes. It is said that the king, Philip II, had some kind of uh, defect. Th thank you very much. Number two, uh, wh what are the name of the palaces in which you play? What uh, are they called? My, uh, Fronton. Fronton. Uh, number three, can you name me uh, uh, Fronton in uh, Miami? Uh, yes, the uh, Highlight Fronton. Uh, <laughs> number one, would Miami. you give me a name? Uh, Miami Highlight Fronton. Uh, number two, what is the length of the playing area? Oh, around uh, 54 meters, I think. Meters. Betty? <laughs> Thank you, bud. Uh, number three, how long is a highlight game? Well, as long as it takes, it depends on points. It's a point. Uh, oh, as in American tennis? In uh, a... Points, yes. Every time you lose, you make a point. Uh, the, your adversary makes a point when you lose. And what is, what is game? What? I'm sorry? What is game? What is the fi how many oh. points are you trying to get for game? Uh, well, uh, a, a team of two games played in Cuba is a 30-point game. Uh, number two, in, do you agree with that? How, ma how many points do you say is a game? Oh, the best. Five, <laughs> six, seven. How tired you get? <laughs> Depends on who's in the lead when you're both pooped. <laughs> Johnny. Uh, number one, <clears throat> is that scarf the only support that you have for your trousers? I noticed when... <laughs> Yes, sir, it is. <laughs> now I know why it's the world's fastest game. <laughs> running bear. Yeah, running yeah. bear. <laughs> Number two, what is the world's second fastest game? Second fast? I like the first, but what, I always I wonder what the second uh, is. I think the horses. 
Horse racing? <laughs> Here's another loser. Uh, number three, what is, the, what is the approximate speed of the ball when it comes off of the, uh, of the court? Oh, well, approximately it's uh, about 150 uh, miles per, an hour. 150 oh. feet uh, per, uh, per second. Number second. one. Kitty. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Were you finished? Oh. I think I am. Yes. yes. <laughs> Number one, what is a cesta? For good. The, what is it? Uh-huh. Or cesta. I don't know how to pronounce cesta. it. Cesta. Yeah. What is it? This is the, the, the thing which uh, we play with. Uh-huh. I see. Number two, would you make a fist, please, like that? With one. With, with your right hand. Left and right. With your right hand. Number three, will you make a fist? Number one, will you make a fist? Number two, when you play, you are holding your cesta with your fingers down along the bottom of it like this. Is that the way you hold it? No, when you... with, the, with the hand. Oh, you put use the a handle? Hand. Yes, with the handle. We put the hand you in the You put the whole hand in? Yes. I see. Number two, is that the way you play too? It's a, a glove where you put the, the fingers in. You put the fingers... I see. That's Thank it. You. Fingers in the glove and time for voting. <laughs> so if you will, panel, kindly mark your ballot. Again? Remembering that there is no consultation as you vote for number one, number two, or number three. Everybody set? It was some tough ones tonight, didn't we? Yes, you sure did. Yeah. Johnny, all ready? For whom did you vote? Uh, number one. He seemed to have uh, no more of the terms of the game. Seem to be better informed with it. Kitty, I know your ballot? About it. I voted for number two purely on the basis of his muscles. <laughs> John, I voted for number one. I, I didn't think a, uh, the playing area was, uh, this would make it 160 or 170 feet. I didn't think it was quite that long, and I didn't think three was quite sharp enough in his answers. He didn't Betty? know where the front town was in Miami, the name of it. <laughs> Betty. Now, I feel pretty silly because I voted for number three. <laughs> You're probably right, Betty. But no, but he's also known as Juarita, and I think that means uh, little war, you know, <laughs> it's a short battle, and I thought maybe he was the smallest of the three. And his nothing wrong with his muscles. No, that's true. that's true. Well, there we have it once again tonight as we come to the final reckoning, our moment of truth, as we like to call it sometimes, when we learn which one of the challengers is the real one in question. In this case, the real world champion singles highlight player. So, may I ask the real Guarita to please stand up. <laughs> Thank you, sir, very much. It's a pleasure having you here. I sure hate to be hit by one of those balls, oh, wouldn't you? Oh, my. Wow. Number one, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? Uh, my name is Manuel Vera. I am from the island of Mallorca, and I work for Iberia Airlines of Spain. Thank you, sir. And number three, your real name and what you do? My name is Victor Santini. I'm from Puerto Rico, and uh, I'm a singer in New York. Good. A singer in good condition, I think you can <laughs> safely say. Is. Well, panel, you've been extremely consistent this, uh, this night. You have had uh, only one correct and three incorrect right smack down the line in each one of our rounds tonight. That means, of course, that there were one, two, three incorrect votes at $250 again for a total of $750 in Tristan. And as for the others, in your case, to a gift package of the fine product from the makers of Tristan. Thanks again for being with us, and good luck with your highlight season. Good night. And we come to the end of another To Tell the Truth session, and there's just time to thank Johnny Carson once again for the really swell job you did with us. It was a joy having you. So you see us again. Oh, yeah. Thank you, bud. Next week, Tom Poston's uh, musical show, Conquering Hero, will be in town, and so Tom will be back with us, and I'll see all the rest of you next week, so good night, panel. Good, good night, night, bud. Bud, bud Collier saying good night from Dristan and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> To Tell the Truth is a Mark Woodson, Bill Todman production in association with the CBS Television Network. Johnny Carson may be seen daily on Who Do You Trust? This is Kara Williams. Harry Morgan and I hope you'll stay tuned to most of these stations. For Gladys and Pete. Oh, uh, isn't he the diplomat? Tell the
the truth has been brought to you tonight by Bicidol powder to settle acid upset stomach and relieve acid indigestion. Johnny Olson saying good night from To Tell the Truth. This program was pre-recorded.